It's going to be a super fun adventure. Is it bad? Should we buy a ferro boat? Well. Close one door and open another. Hi. It's a little bit sad actually. <laughs> so we're going across the van to see to the Bandit Island. What? Hey everyone, this is the episode you guys have all been waiting for. It's the story of what happened to Catalpa 1. If you are new to our channel and you've only seen Catalpa 2, well we had a boat before this and we never actually told the whole story of what happened to Catalpa. We're going back in time to 2022 when we officially said goodbye to Catalpa 1. It will be a little bit emotional and there is a scene in there where there is a little bit of blood spilled. So as you see the warning come up, if you uh, get a little bit faint around blood like I do, turn away. This is our first hour long video, so let us know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this. So grab a cup of tea, a coffee or a beer, sit down and let's get into this video. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. After five years exploring Southeast Asia and one attempt to cross the Indian Ocean, we were feeling like new adventures were on the horizon. We had been in Ambon, Indonesia with our buddy boat for two months. After years travelling Indonesia together, these guys had become just like family. So when they had to rebuild their engine, we stayed because we wanted to help and because we loved travelling with them. Even though we were stuck here, our fun and adventures continued. I just learnt on that pole. They're like doing something. She said don't touch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm telling you, it gives you a good bite. Proper 240. And a lady just came over yeah. and said don't lean on the pole because it's it's live. You've got to be careful of power. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Your hair looks cute. Oh, don't touch the pole. The guy just don't touched touch. the pole. Don't touch. <laughs> it zapped you. Oh, you right? <laughs> He's tougher than you, babe. He didn't even madly move. Oh, yeah. it grabbed me. I had lent on it and I was like, Ugh. Everybody's ready. <laughs> But it also was time to make life-altering decisions. As Nalakai were planning on sailing back to Australia, we had to decide whether we wanted to do the same. We love Southeast Asia, and as much as we could keep exploring this magical place, we felt Catalpa was not up to sailing beyond here, and across the oceans where we all dreamed of adventuring. Do we make our way across the sea back to the land down under and sail Catalpa, look for a bigger and more ocean-worthy boat that would suit us to sail further around the world? Or do we continue exploring the vast amount of islands in this beautiful country? Part of us, especially me, didn't want my Indonesian dream life to end. We wrote an ad and placed our beloved Catalpa on a Facebook post advertising her for sale. Immediately, we had someone interested in buying. And this is how the story unfolded from here. Leading up to the decision to sell, and while we were in Ambon, we started to get Catalpa ready to put on the market. Anyway, it was terrible. We haven't varnished for two years. For two years? Longer. Longer, three years. 
Yeah, it was due for it. We found some in the back locker. We got tubs of varnish, so we thought we'd clean it up. Anyway, it's looking good. These guys yeah. are working hard. Work hard, I'm, I'm filming. <laughs> now, so if I can get around the boat like this, and I can pick up all the imperfections. So we just found some borax that was in the cupboard. I've had for years of what in Australia. Never used it really. And um, Lee's just cleaned the hull and look at it. It's environmentally friendly. It's That's insane. So if you're wondering how to clean your hull, use some borax. Look, it's a treat. Paint might fall off, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> might wake up tomorrow and there's no paint on there. Put an elbow grease It's just borax. Yeah. Is it like gumption? No, it doesn't disappear like gumption. So that will rub like a whole section yeah. and Is it sort of builds up in the middle of your thing and yeah. you just keep using it. Tara, our beautiful friend, is very organised and has a passion for organising, which is great because I am the opposite. So we could definitely use some help in this department. We have a lot of stuff to go through and with Tara's expertise, she made it not so overwhelming. She helped us declutter and organise so that when it was time to move out, we knew exactly what we had and what we wanted to take and what we could donate while we were here. But if you're curious of what we have medical wise, this is all of it here, right? Is this everything? This is everything. I'll go over it slowly. We may voice over what we actually have or if you have any questions, you can write a comment down below. And that's it. And then we have a box of antibiotics and prescription stuff that Lee's looking through. Thanks, Tara. You made this overwhelming task so much easier for us. We appreciate and love you. Not only was Tara helping get the inside organized, there was preparation done to the outside of Catalpa to get her presentable. Thanks to all the kids for their hard work. You guys are the best. Most was just cleaning and decluttering, tidying up the varnish as Catalpa was in really good condition. Probably the best that she's been in in years. Lee had the engine working like a dream. The rigging was excellent, new sails, and all systems had no issues. The only thing she needed was a haul out and a bottom paint. We're hopefully heading off in a couple of days, but we're not sure. There's a guy coming to look at Catalba, which is a little bit exciting. We're just going for a little bit of a, a go before the guy comes to look at it tomorrow. As you can see, we've cleared off a lot of things. <laughs> it's purring like a kitten. Temperature's good, oil pressure's good. She's never felt lighter. And our cockpit looks amazing. I don't think I videoed the finish and the varnish. So it's like 9.30 at night. We are trying to get the boat ready to sell. And uh, today, I accidentally spilled something on our table and made another job for Lee. He's not real happy with me. If anyone's got a varnished table, don't spill bicarb soda in water. Because this is what happens. It bubbled the varnish. It's insane. Anyway, we're getting through all our lists of to-dos before the guy comes to, to see the boat, but this was this was not on the plan. Well, we'll show you how it turns out anyway. <laughs> oh, the table was really nice. So what we're doing today is there's a guy coming to look at the boat. We put it on Facebook for sale. We haven't really listed it, but there's like someone really interested and they're coming from Bali. They're flying in to Ambon today to hopefully buy the boat. So I'm a little bit mixed feelings about it, but it's the right decision. And I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'll start crying. So he's going to be here any minute. I'm just going to show you the boat. I'm going to get choked up. Um, we've cleaned it up the best we could. And uh, yeah, I just thought I'd give a little walk through of what Catalpa looks like and it, you know, maybe one of the last videos that we make on here, so, oh, that's sad. I can't wait to get these hands onto a new boat. I'm excited. It's time for new adventures, different location, different boat, bigger, smaller, I don't know, hopefully bigger. We have a guy, two guys now that have come from Bali and we are positioned in Ambon and they've been for a sail they've been on the boat they've been over a few things and the weather window that we had to get back to australia last week has closed so we didn't want to go against the grain and we're gonna to have to wait for another weather window sarah's just she's 
Poor little thing, she's just not feeling it. Uh, we're going to have no home potentially in a couple of days. And um, sort of just leaving it up to the universe to uh, create our next path. I'm scared, I think I'd, I'd feel more comfortable if we were moving onto another boat. What scares you the most? Then we won't get into another boat. <laughs> we get stuck in normal life. Katapa's, uh, she's definitely not worth a million bucks. So Sarah's feeling a little bit of fear about not being able to get into another boat. I think we will. We'll be right, darling. So four and a half years ago, we were a little bit like this. I was actually on the other side of the fence. I didn't want to leave because we had $5,000 in the bank account. Obviously, we had no debt and we owned everything. But we took a leap. And uh, nearly five years later, guys, we've made it work. <laughs> we've had a lot of problems in between. But we've always found a solution. Hasn't been easy, but it's been challenging. But we've learnt a lot. And... Uh, Probably more than I wanted to learn, but anyway, I suppose we're about to take another leap. We're selling a boat that's not really worth much in a market that's so overinflated. So it's going to be challenging, but I think we'll make it work. It's just a moment. I don't feel like this all the time. It's not often. <laughs> Wednesday, it's the day after Taj's birthday. Taj turned 17 yesterday, which is crazy. Anyway, we've been in Ambon, we've been here for a very long time, we're waiting to leave. But there has been a couple of guys that came out to look at, they're interested in buying really? Catalpa. They came out, they've flown from Bali, they've came to look at the boat, um, we've given it a test run, they've been through the boat, they just didn't get to dive on the boat, they were going to dive on the boat and then look over the engine and things a little bit more intensely. What happened was the guy, one of the guys got COVID. It's been about three, four days since they came and looked at the boat and they're coming back today. So we've been just sitting here waiting. We're still a bit of a waiting game. Our plan is to sail back to Australia if they don't buy the boat and sell the boat in Australia. But if we can sell the boat here, then we're gonna jump on Nalakai and sail back to Australia with them. So. So exciting but we've just been in limbo we've just been well that's probably them now saying that they're here yeah we'll just see how it all goes so they got some mixed feelings i was real emotional the other day when they came and looked at the boat i was didn't think i was ready to sell the boat i probably would have felt different if we had another boat to move on to but i've just yeah it's really i don't know i just i don't really know how i'm feeling but I think they've just messaged, they're probably here. We'll go pick them up, they can do what they gotta do, and uh, yeah, this afternoon we should know whether we are leaving in Nalakai or Catalpa. Very close to boat list, we'll have an answer in the next few hours. Whether these people wanna buy Catalpa and continue on the Catalpa legacy. Yeah, we got bigger plans. As much as we love this old girl, we know it inside and out, and she's been good to us for a fair few years now. I think it's time to uh, go pick up the new owners and um, see what happens. What happened yesterday was the, the guys that came to look at the boat that we thought were really keen um, started stuffing around, not answering us. They'd come out, they couldn't pick any faults with the boat. The only thing they could say is it needs to be scraped and any fouled, which we already told them that. And then they wanted to drop price. So we said that we were going to sail back to Australia because we're pretty sure we can sell the boat in Australia for the price we're asking. I waited in this harbour for two weeks for them. Told them last night by 8am this morning. Catalpa will no longer be available so it's about 9. We're just putting back the water maker in everything off Nalakai that we moved over there for the sale of the boat. Sorry, that's what we're doing this morning Lee is putting the water maker. Whoa, I nearly dripped over it. The water maker back in because we took it off. We weren't going to sell it with the boat because we were going to use it to sail back on Nalakai. Again, our plans have changed and we will be sailing Catalpa back to Australia. So we're going to leave Ambon today because it wasn't meant to be. We thought that there'd be a new journey and new adventures today, but that's just how the cookie crumbles, I guess. We are sailing back to Australia, so we're going to 
start heading southeast and head towards the K Islands and check out of Tool. Let's go have a good time. We want to give Indonesia the proper send off that it deserves. We've had an incredible and amazing time in Indonesia and we love it. It's our home away from home. But yeah, we're ready for new adventures and we're going to take this old girl back to Australia. So we're finally pulling anchor from Ambon and we're leaving today. We're going to go to Amahusu, clean the bottom and then we're off to Tool. She's been a good place to have a engine fixed to nearly sell the boat and uh, just to get everything in order again. But we're heading off. We're all provisioned up and ready to go. These guys are just getting their chain up and I think it's gonna be pretty gross. Oh there is? Plastic bags. Oh, single use plastic bags guys if you can do do, do the world a favor don't use single use plastic plastic bags tell the captain we're untying the lines did washing yesterday and it rained and it's still not dry so i think i'm gonna have to wash it again because it's got that lovely smell that it gets when you wash clothes and then it rains on them Is that where from? we are drifting <laughs> all right guys undo the line boy we're ready to roll we're cutting the umbilical cord. We've been connected for a few months, <laughs> two months. <laughs> oh, ever. I'm having deja vu. Last time we left, Matt's engine didn't get past right now, but it sounds, it's purring like a pussycat right now, isn't it? Morning, Ali. Miss you much, yeah. Uh, thanks, Nico, for everything. Okay. We'll see you later. Really pretty sky. <laughs> we um, anchored at Amahusu and cleaned the bottom of Catalpa because she had a lot of growth on her. Um, and this morning we left Amahusu. This is pulled anchor from Amahusu. We are heading out of the bay today. We are sailing. Oh, look at a little bit of head sail out guys and it's it's very nice it's not a lot it's enough to push us along at maybe three or four knots but we're not in a rush the guy that came and looked at the boat decided he wouldn't didn't want the boat and started negotiations after he'd left here um, he's come back again <laughs> and we've actually settled on a price we could tell us so We've told him all of the logistics. We're asking for a deposit before we head back or be anywhere for him and waiting. And we're just waiting to hear back whether he wants to go through with that because the transaction and everything in Indonesia is a little bit trickier than anywhere else in the world. So um, the boat has to stay in our name until he leaves the country. And we're just uh, waiting to hear back. But. So we're not going too far, but we're going around to the other anchorage in Ambon, which is a little bit nice so we can swim there. Chasing a bit of clear water. And maybe wait a day or two and see what he says, but yeah, we don't know yet. We still, this could be our last sail on Catalpa, we don't know. We just, we have to wait. We're in limbo, guys. Again, we're just... I don't know what the universe is teaching us patience, but we're always waiting for a reply. We're waiting for the next move. We're waiting. Where do we go? What do we do? But that's all right. We're, we've kind of surrendered that over and go, you know what? If it's supposed to be, it'll happen. And if it's not, we're just, we're on our way. So we've left. And if this all doesn't come through, then we're going to sail to the K Islands, which are supposed to be incredible. So there's some cool things to see before we leave Indonesia, um, but we are going to leave Indonesia in the next month or so. So that is scary and exciting and there's a lot of mixed feelings I have. I think we've had our time in Indonesia. Yeah, we're all ready for a new, new adventures. We've had a great time here and we will always love Indonesia. What happens, what the future brings, we're excited for it. Um, yeah, today we're just kind of just sailing along it's just very nice it's very enjoyable we got the wind from behind and 
just the head sail out so we've got the cover up still which is it's nice because we've got shade and we've got sail bloody beautiful darling it is had a lot going on. We have got a non-refundable deposit from the people that are buying our boat. So Catalpa is officially nearly sold and we are in the process right now of cleaning all our, our stuff, transferring all the stuff, all the food that we're taking over to Nalakai. In a couple of days we're going to be homeless off Catalpa and sailing back to Australia on a 50 foot catamaran. It's exciting, nervous, scared. All the feelings are happening at the moment. We're ready for our next adventure. Decide what we're taking and what we're leaving. We're getting all the food off first and Tara is packing it away on their boat. All our food that just came over from our boat is going. <laughs> it's packed. Tara's done a wonderful job. Look how organized she is. It's so neat. You have so much room. Oh my gosh, yeah. We were provisioned up probably for six months so we have a lot of food. We're going to be doing a lot of eating on the way back to Australia. We can only take so much with us. It's not like we were hopping onto another boat, which we sort of tried to plan it that way, but it hasn't worked out that way. Like Sarah said, we've got to ride back on a 50-foot catamaran to Australia, and we're going to be on the hunt for a new a vessel. I don't know when and where and how, and it's all going to come together, but we'll make it happen. We always do. Might be the last time we have sushi on Catalpa. Um, any of these books, it's all the last really sad actually. So many memories, so many good times on this boat. Yeah. It's time to move on. Yeah. Time to get a new home and go somewhere new. We're excited. But it's very overwhelming today. We've got two days to get off. We've got to decide what we need and what we want and what can fit. We're going to keep going at it and hopefully get everything done that we can today. And then we've got tomorrow and the handover is happening Wednesday. The new owners fly in Wednesday morning and it's Monday today. So, oh God, we're gonna get busy. It's a little overwhelming. I'm a little bit nervous, but. Bella's packed up her room. I was just supposed to be packing up his room. It always looks the same. He's ready to go. Handstands. You were doing handstands? <sighs> oh, darling. Oh, Nalakai. No, my boat. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll clean you up. I pass it to you, Dad. You want to come down, Belly? And we'll my clean. nose is fine. Yeah, no um, What You're is okay. that? It's like a dribble. That's alright. We'll come downstairs. I'm not home. getting stitches. Just let Dad look at it, sweetheart. I don't want anything done to it. What did you hit? Something? The ground. Just oh. the ground. I think so. I don't know did what you happened. Hit, you did a handstand you? and you fell on your face. I think I might have hit the winch. Oh, sweetie. We're going to get some wipes so you can get this off. Do you want to get some wipes so she can clean this off her? There you are. Yep, there you are. that'd be great. Um, have we got some like normal cleaning wipes? Like Get the first aid kit that we just had out. Oh my god, no. What is it? No, it's just so like that we can quit. If, if you cut your finger, we do the same, okay? You need to just put something on it and probably wrap it up. I don't want anything that will hurt. I know. Please, Mum. Just, no, that's right. I'll just get your nose first. Yeah. It's okay. We all do silly stuff. Mummy's done like, plenty of silly things. Is it bad? I just want to know. It's not bad. You'll be it's fine. I just don't want to, like... It'll heal up and you'll be okay and it's a cool story, it's right? Fine. Like... Together. Together. Okay. No stitches, no needle. Well, that's all I wanted. Okay. You I haven't needle. broken your nose and it's not swollen. And I it's, think you've um, just cut here, but you've got you've cut. landed here, right? You, you fall on your head. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, did you pass out? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't do that with your face, Bella. It's just nice and calm because you're making it bleed. Thank you. I'm just going to make this longer than it needs to be so it actually... Holds. Yeah, that's a good idea. You usually pull it across. Yeah. Like, you just got into a fight. Yeah, yeah the thing is, I knew left. it was going to happen. Why did you do it? Just, just maybe it wouldn't. We had a bit of a accident last night. The new owners of the boat were supposed to be here today at lunchtime, but their flight got delayed or cancelled, and they ended up not coming. We haven't heard from them today, so we're not sure what's going on there. But there was an accident last night, and Bella fell on her face. Um, 
it's not funny. She, she's making me laugh. But she, we found out the truth. She wasn't just handstanding on the front of the boat. She was doing a backflip and um, didn't quite make it. So I don't suggest anybody backflipping on the front of a mono hull where there's an anchor winch and a lot of hazards. Um, that wasn't the greatest idea. Please glove I'm it up. I'm not sure if it's going to heal because it's very open but we're going to investigate now if it needs stitches we're going to put a little it's bit of local a, it's in it's in a bad spot followed by maybe three sutures and we oh, should yes, be good no that. we're not stitching not? but it's in a bad spot here because every time she laughs or talks it kind of moves so i think that's why it's bleeding it's not bleeding too bad but we're going to have a look at it now we're going to uh, clean this up and get another strap on here aren't we clean it. we're just putting straps we're going to clean it and it looks like it's been bleeding all night so hopefully i can get this off without opening it clean it and get some more back on oh that's really good that's closed up nicely yeah. so um, that. maybe just give me the saline a little thing of saline right. looking real good another right. tissue we gotta do some backflips. Have an awesome scar. <laughs> we gotta do some backflips. Yep. You might be wondering how I got this. Well, this is where it happened. I was holding on to these two ropes, and I was like, "They're a bit loose, eh? I probably shouldn't do it." And I'm like, "Not nah, just send it." So I backflip him all the way around. And I'm like, "Josh, go ahead." We're about to get off guitar for the new owners are flying in and she's all cleaned out. We have moved on to Nalakai. We're getting a ride back to Australia on Nalakai and let's go show you our home for one last time. Yeah, she looks a little bit different to when we lived on here but everything is... <laughs> we are leaving the owners some stuff so they're sailing back to Bali. Left some things on here for them but She's all empty and very clean and we've had so many great memories aboard her and it's a little bit sad actually. <laughs> we've been, uh, we've owned Cattell for nearly eight years and um, our kids have had a lot of their childhood on this boat. Yeah, we're ready for a new one, but it's also super sad because, yeah, I'm going to miss her. We get another one, right? <laughs> She's been a good old home. <laughs> this is where we cooked many dinners and this is where we ate them. This is how we washed our clothes. We have a twin tub washing machine. So we're about to say goodbye to our our beautiful old home. We're in search for a new boat and first of all we're gonna go back and have some time with our family. We haven't we haven't seen them for I think it was nearly a year before coronavirus had even happened, right? So it'll be great to see our family and our friends and yeah we've got some exciting new things coming along in the future and it will be very very exciting but Right now we're just gonna <laughs> say goodbye to what we've known for the last eight years as our home. What do I say? This is what it is. We time to move on to uh, bigger and better things. We're selling her in good shape too. She's everything's working. Everything's um, so as far as we get the million questions, should we buy a ferro boat? Well, we had eight years of fun on this one. Sure, it had a bit more work here and there, but no different to I suppose if you got a steel or fiberglass boat. I see many boats have many problems with those too, so I don't know, if it's in your budget, it was in ours at the time and it served us really well. If you don't have the money to go, get a boat that you can afford and just go because I, I would not trade the last eight years of our life for anything. I just hope we can get into another one. <laughs> we will. We have to. We'll find a new home. 
He's trying to make me upset. <laughs> On for new adventures? Yeah. You gotta leave the old ones behind and create the new ones. So. Close one door and open another. That's it. <laughs> Don't know what that door is yet, guys, but. Hopefully, we get to open one soon. <laughs> Officially off Catalpa, we've moved on to Nalakai. As you can see, it's not just Nalakai anymore. We're going to sail back to Australia with these guys. They have very nicely offered to take us back to Australia aboard Nalakai. We're super grateful. It's going to be a super fun adventure. But yeah, we just said goodbye to Catalpa. We're leaving her in this harbour in Indonesia. And yeah, it's a little bit sad. That's how I'm feeling at the moment. It's all it's just all it kind of feels a little bit unreal, but more real because it's taken so long. It's been a bit of a drawn out process, but we are finally leaving Ambon. We've been here since December. It's now February, so we are stoked. The captain over here is like so happy. <laughs> they have been waiting for us for a while to get all everything approved and everything done. So thank you. Thank you, Nalakai family. We're off. We're going to take you guys on a, a, an adventure with Nalakai. There's eight people living on this catamaran and we're going to sail back to Australia. We're going to bring you along with us. Bella's nose is looking better too. We've taken the things off and it's sealed up pretty nicely. She's going to have a bit of a scar there. Not too bad, she didn't even bruise. New people. Lots of new... Some new talent. Some new actors. I'm going to act like I can sail. This hit me pretty hard. Not only were we leaving our home, we were leaving a country that we'd all grown very fond of. I was just going to show Matt how to sail a cat so it can beat a mono in the future. He hasn't been able to beat the pharaoh girl, so... <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you're on the same team. Now. You're on the same team. It's OK. I'll give him the tricks of the trade now. We weren't leaving here just yet. We still had a few more adventures, and as emotional as it was, it was also very exciting, the start of a new and incredible journey.
We've not been sailing on a catamaran for very long and I already am loving it. This is the best jumping off the boat as we sail along. Our first stop just for one night was this beautiful anchorage. jungle. I don't know if this is someone's home but it's a big boat in amongst the trees. So we just met the guy over here and that's his family's boat in there. Um, they've been building that boat for five months and they're gonna put it in the water in one week. So yeah, he lives in the village just around the corner. Lovely guy, he has a little bit of English, not much. <laughs> Bye. 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 We pulled anchor this morning. We're about 100 nautical miles from where we're going to stop next. So we're going across the Van Sea to the Van der Islands. We were there about four years ago, nearly exactly, actually. So it's the Spice Islands. It's got a lot of history. It's a pretty cool place. The weather is looking okay. We should have winds behind us. So downwind on a catamaran is pretty perfect sailing. Lee is at the helm. He likes this boat bit of a south swell, south southwest swell and we've got the wind behind us so the swell should be a little bit on the beam but the wind will be behind, there's predicted one and a half metres of swell and about 15 knots of wind that could be 30, you don't know with Indonesia. No five knots but we've got no sail out, it's motoring at the moment. Here we go, last time we crossed the Van der Sea, what happened? <laughs> we won't go there yet until we cross the Van der Sea. I'll tell you a little story after we get to Van der Islands. <laughs> if you want to go watch it though, you can click up in the corner. Last time we were at Van der Islands, four years ago. The time is going off, the bread is in the oven, so I'm going to go down. I'll take you down and I'll show you guys where we're sleeping. <laughs> well, that's one way to wake everybody up. <laughs> this is the galley in Alakai and our room is in here. Well, I'm still getting used to where the light switches. Oh, bear with me. <laughs> this is where Lee and I are sleeping. This is Liam's room and he's kindly given it up for us. He's chasing the bread. Oh, it's looking all right, but it's not ready yet. This is where the kids are sleeping. In Ali's room. Ali's being very kind to give that up and they are both in the spare room, so. That is their room. That is the toilet. And Matt and Tara and the kids are on the other in the other hole. It's a very, a very nice galley. Okay, you believe we're sailing. It's very still. Alright, we're just coming past the fad 
Yeah. Matt's gonna jump in, have a spear. I'm gonna jump in with him and uh, let's have a swim. <laughs> Film? Film him catching a fish, hopefully. He's had requests for a mahi mahi. And uh, what else was it? Oh, wahoo, yeah. This might seem like a little nuts, jumping off the boat in the middle of nowhere, but the fads that are put here are fish attracting devices. So there's a chance there's schools of fish hanging around them, looking for their own dinner. And it's worth a look to see if Matt can feed the crew. Liam was driving Nalakai and pretty much just hangs around nearby. Bella and Ali decided to join and on the next lap, they jumped off Nalakai and joined us. These fads are anchored in hundreds of metres of water and have things hanging off them to bring the fish in. The little fish, then the big fish, and so on and so on. Lots of people ask us all the time, aren't you scared of sharks just swimming in the middle of the ocean? But for some reason, it's not what I think about. I love being in the blue ocean so much that I forget all about the potential dangers that could be lurking beneath us. We had no luck at this one, so we jumped back on board. There was another one close by. Back in we went to check it out, but unfortunately the schools of mahi we were hoping for were nowhere to be seen. into Banda about 3 a.m. We're going six knots still and then we're pulling the sail. There's heaps of lights out there, like fads. The boys couldn't find anywhere to anchor because where they wanted to tie up there's a boat and the anchorage is where we were last time there's boat so it's all a little bit difficult. So Liam has been just uh, drifting around while Matt has a sleep and Lee has a sleep and then we'll work out where we're going to drop the anchor bar. So this is Ganang Api. We found a spot, dropped anchor and stern tied to the shore. The Banda Islands, located in Indonesia, are renowned for their rich history and pivotal role in the spice trade. Once the world's only source of nutmeg and mace, these islands attracted European powers in the 16th and 17th century. Today we're going to walk to the fort and have a look and uh, meet Lee and Matt and Tara came in earlier. We are going in now. <laughs> there was this old grandpa in the chair here. <laughs> we just got to Banda. This is where we found them, having a lovely time taking in the view at Chulu Binteng Estate. The Chulu Binteng Estate is a noble heritage site reflecting the region's rich history. This is the fish. The fish. <laughs> this is not sour because the real one is sour. It's like a yeah. little bit spicy, like ginger. Ginger, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the, the, the shell from the nutmeg. We can make nutmeg candy, nutmeg syrup, and nutmeg jam okay. also. Uh -huh. yeah. red, the red, nutmeg, right. nutmeg yeah. jam is very sweet. Yeah, they put with, this also they put with the sugar because normally the real one is very sour, and we put the nutmeg uh, sugar. Uh, yeah. Alright, so we've got some nutmeg jam and some bread. We're going to yeah, try it. Butter, <laughs> <also>. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to butter it with this knife. 
the vanilla story about the like a period of the Majapahit. Yeah? Aye. Like a much to buy not like gym. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. This Natalia always stay with her two weeks here. Mm. Oh, that's kind of nice. That's it's pretty nice. It's yeah. not real sweet. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. You sell only one girl, I get 30,000 a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. I like that. And the bread, actually, I show you. Yeah, bread. it's not too sweet like strawberry jam. No. Yeah, that's good. The yeah. bread's sweeter so than the jam. We don't buy the, yeah, it's really the nice. jam from outside. The band of island already put the inside. It's almost oh. like refreshing. Belle, you no, want to no. try some, Bob? Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> Twelve room. Twelve rooms? Yeah, if you see the room, this one of the room, you can see. The estate often serves as a guest house, providing a unique opportunity for travellers to immerse themselves in the history and culture. Oh, look, they're cooking. There's another bread in there. What is that feeling? Look at that the But this we call the the fish tuna tuna. Ah, yeah. abon ikan. Yeah. Have you two moved? Our uh, back home. You moved out of the sun, I see. I'm falling asleep. Would you like to try some jam? Nutmeg jam? Oh, yeah. They have a problem. Oh my god. They messaged her when we were downstairs and said that they have a problem because their beer was empty, but we didn't have it. Sarah's phone was up here. So they still have a problem. Aww. Oh. So we're back at the same fort we were four years ago. We're going to go have a little bit of a look. <laughs> Oh god! <laughs> so this is uh, the Fort de Belgica or Belgica, can't say it. Oh there's some lovely cows here. Hi cows! Well the fort isn't open today, we don't know if it's not open at all or if it's just not open because it's Sunday. But it's not open so I'll get a nice photo of you too. Lee's ruining it in the background. Oh! Jesus Christ! To my ears I can't even hear! Oh my god! He's still in shock. Oh, you, did you poo your pants? No. A bomb went off. All these cannons. It's true that you can smell the spices when you arrive and every time we smell fresh nutmeg, it reminds us of this awesome little island in the Banda Sea. We met a really cool family here. They're actually travelling by camper van in Indonesia and they travel around and we've never met anyone in Indonesia that lives in their camper van and travels. And they also have a YouTube channel so you can go over there and follow them as well. But yeah, we just thought we'd share their story. My name is Dodi and my wife is Melati. We are a Keluarga Kusmayadi family or Keluarga Kusmayadi from Indonesia who travel with motor home. Mm -hmm. Traveling around Indonesia for almost uh, oh, yes. four years. Yeah, it's been really cool. We've had big conversations about our lifestyles and it's nice to talk to people that understand yes. each other, what, <laughs> the highs and the lows of traveling. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it started when we went, traveled to uh, Flores. We visited Wairebo. It's a village uh, around 1,000 meters above sea level. So we have to trek uh, to get there, uh, to do the trekking to get there. About four hours. So there's no electricity there, there's no internet, no phone, no nothing. But uh, we can see the people are content, they are happy without the essential that uh, you find easily in big cities. 
So uh, I told my husband that, uh, and the people also live uh, very in harmony with the nature. I I proposed to him to travel uh, as a learner uh, non-stop for one year. But the consequences we have to at that time uh, went out from Malaysia, leave everything behind, and he has to resign. So it's a long conversation. So we embark on this journey to learn. That's the main idea. the The plan is one year, but now it's up already up. Yeah, this is the last et etape, uh, it, uh, the last part, the yeah, last part of the traveling around Indonesia, Maluku and the Papua Island. Okay. okay. So we visited Sumatra, Java, Bali, uh, Nusa Tenggara, so western part Nusa Tenggara, eastern part Nusa Tenggara, Sulawesi and Kalimantan. So Maluku and Papua is the last uh, island. And then you have plans to travel? Anywhere else in the world? Uh, we hope so, but we don't have any plan yeah. yet. Yeah, we just go with the flow. <laughs> where, where would you like to go? Yeah. We don't know yet. Don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah, only. the Australia and the New Zealand is the one of the uh, our main. Uh, uh, yeah. Because we 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 know that the traveling with camper van is, is more fun there. Yeah, <laughs> more fun there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they have the facility and everything established there. So yeah, we would like to try that as well. Yeah, so it's not very common for camper vans in Indonesia. No, no. no. <laughs> you guys are pretty rare. Yeah, I think yeah. we are the first. Yeah. One of lah. Yeah, one of the the family in Indonesia who travel with motor home or camper van. Yeah. In, yeah. in a long. In the long journey. Term, yeah. In the long. Uh, Long journey, lah, yeah. It's amazing. You guys are inspiring other people to go do it. Uh, <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. Yeah. Yeah. And you have two children? Yes, yeah. uh, 18 and 16 years old. And they like this lifestyle? Uh, at the beginning, no. <laughs> they told us that we are crazy. <laughs> we are crazy parents. <laughs> <laughs> we dragged them. <laughs> we dragged them. They didn't have any choice. They don't have another choice, so yeah. But eventually, uh, they get it. Regular reflection, uh, and we ask um, our daughter, "What did you get from this journey?" Um, uh, she she said that uh, there is more to life. There is more to life. Uh, so life is not about learning, working, studying, uh, waking working. up, going to the office or school, but. Uh, there are many things uh, happen in this life because along the journey they meet these wonderful people. One of their main um, experience that they remember when they went to Palu. In Palu, uh, when we visit Palu, uh, they just have this tsunami in 2019. So they meet these uh, young people who uh, work for the society for the people who affected by tsunami so they build school they build literacy our yeah our daughter and son learn from them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so hopefully hopefully um, this experience will benefit them in the future we don't know what what is gonna be but hopefully it <laughs> you guys homeschool your kids yeah. Which, yeah. Again, in Indonesia, is pretty rare. <laughs> <laughs> How did your families take that when you told them you were going to homeschool? Um, yeah, actually, we start we started the homeschool before the journey for our son. We, um, uh, somehow, <laughs> the our family believe in our uh, decision, <laughs> so they don't they don't they didn't they question, them, uh, they didn't question yeah. that much. Okay, so they know that we choose the the best thing for for our kids. So yeah, they just believe. Okay, so that's what we choose. Lucky us, lucky us. Yes, yeah, lucky. yeah, lucky us. Because not not many get the same reaction from them. Yeah, beautiful way to live. I think what you guys are doing is awesome. Oh, hopefully, you too. You, too. <laughs> you guys too. You are inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> really so much. To meet you guys.
good to meet you guys. Um, anyone wants to jump on out right now, on YouTube, you can watch their journey. See you later. Still in Banda. We were supposed to leave today. We haven't left. Us girls are going to go climb a Gunung Api, that volcano. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. It's probably not the, the smartest idea, but we think we can get up there and back down before it's dark. So we're going to try anyway. Thanks, Liam. Thanks, Liam. Here we go. We're going to cl climb a Gunung Api of uh, the Mountain of Fire. It took us about two hours last time and it's a really hard climb. We're a little bit nervous. But we've got to get a move on because it is late in the afternoon. But we'll probably be able to see the sun go down, so that'll be lovely. Okay, welcome to your 10 minute interval. <laughs> Two hours, one hour and 50 minutes to go. What's the time? Time to get a crack of lacken, I reckon. Had a, a two minutes, I think we had two minutes. We're gonna duck the spider. Hopefully there's no more of them. Why is this so hard? <laughs> okay, what have we been walking for now? Half an hour? 20 minutes. That's 20 minutes. We're having another stop. And uh, Tara's turned around. We've lost one. Gonna go back down and uh, wait for us down the bottom. Well, we are losing light. We've got a little bit to go. If we had more time in the day, I'd probably be a bit slower, but I feel like the time is getting away. This is where it starts getting a little bit tricky. All the ruts start sliding. Told the girls not to catch me. If I start falling backwards, just to let me go to down so I don't take a run out. We're getting there. Uh, but the rocks aren't so slippery up here, which is nice. So not falling over so much. But, um, I don't know how long we've got. We've got a little bit to go and the sun is dropping, so. Pretty sure from memory, this is getting close to the end. And there's rocks, oh, don't grab that one. Whoops. And there's rocks either side of us. Pretty sure this is getting close to the end of the trail. I hope so. I guess it is getting darker. Super close. Hopefully. They come. Ooh, 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 ooh. <sighs> the spider. Go low and go to your right. <sighs> Nailed it. It's the end of the climb as we know it. We're so nearly there. So pretty. You! Like we are there. nearly there. How close are we? Not very. <laughs> We're nearly there. Maybe five more minutes. the top dance da, 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 da. <laughs> you're missing the view girls <laughs> the sky's beautiful yeah, it is we could just camp there for the night yeah, yeah. Did you bring it up it's get cold up here would it yeah. it's like really oh. hot on this side of my body yeah but on this side it's like and the cooler. steam yeah <laughs> I really don't like the rubble. The rocks, the loose rocks. Not a fan. I'm sliding. Especially when it's like that one. <laughs> oh, I just really want to be in the ocean right now. Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh, look at this bug. Don't jump, dude. Don't do it. Oh, it's not that bad. All right, we're at the summit of Ganung Api. A uh, steaming volcano. It's an active volcano, I guess. Last erupted in 1988. And we are eating sultanas. <laughs> <laughs>
We made it only after a couple we days. Made it. Yep. <laughs> do, do. So beautiful. Um, like a a round thing that you just put on your bum and you just sat down and slid. That would be useful. Wait. In my theory is that I'm going to do this and go too fast. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on our way down. Ooh, it's a little bit slippery. It's getting a little bit dark. <laughs> Hopefully we get down quicker than how we got up. It's a beautiful view. We're glad we did it. But it was a very hard hike. We're not going to lie, that was difficult, but we did it under two hours, so it's pretty good going. So we're leaving Banda Island tonight, oh. <laughs> and, we're, and we're heading for the Kay Islands, which is about 130 nautical miles away, so about 24 hours of sailing, and we're all going to be pooped, so hopefully we can get out of night watches because there's a lot of people on the boat. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm gonna put the camera away. It's a little, it's a little bit hectic. <laughs> yeah, don't mind me. I'm just falling over. Just dodging spiders. <laughs> There's a rock coming in hot. I so thought you were like just casually brushing his water off my back. I'm like, oh, yeah. No, I, I felt like my hand just reached you and I felt it was just like the slightest, like, like, like the slightest touch. Oh, We've got to be getting close. Yeah. We've got to be close. Oh. I don't think so. Okay. It feels like. So I just um, walked into a wasp nest or whatever those things are and it landed in my mouth, flew in my mouth and it stung my tongue. And we've lost the track. <laughs> um, it's getting dark and we don't know where we are. Thank you for watching that episode. We are so stoked that you made it all the way to the end. Like always, guys, we are so grateful to have you guys as our audience. This is our first hour-long episode. We hope you enjoyed. We put a lot of effort into this. If you want to see what else we got up to living on the boat with Nalakai, then comment down below. You know what to do. Like, subscribe. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.